Okay. Number nine. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? <clears throat> and ten says, He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heaven that he might fill all in all. You know, the Lord came down as a child and uh, was, was born and raised of a, of a mother here on earth, just like me and you and I, raised up in his childhood, grew, having the Spirit of God inside of him, knowing things that, you know, most, that we would never have known as mortals, but Jesus knew. But growing up as he did, you know, he came down, he lived among us, you know, and then taught and everything, and when he left from here, it just ended up. But he had to come down first to descend before he could ascend back. But what Apostle Paul is also telling here is that uh, that he was that he might fulfill all things all in all. This talking about Christ being exalted, being exalted above us, you know. In Philippians two and nine, it says, "Wherefore God also has highly exalted him." And given him a name which is above every name. <clears throat> in the very beginning, when the angel told Mary about she was going to have one, she, she told him about the name that was to be given, a name that was above all, you know, in Jesus. And, you know, and uh, the Lord, he was exalted from the first right off the bat because of who he was, the Son of God, leaving his riches in glory come down here to do the will of his father, you know. And Ephesians 1 and 2 tells us this, that Paul writes says, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. When, when he was resurrected and went back to, to his father, his father had him with his place, a throne on his right hand side for his place for him to sit. A place of power, you know, and a place of honor to be glorified. <clears throat> you know, and one other thing here that I read that I really kind of like and I'm going to pass along says Revelations 5, 12 and 13 tells us this. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And in verse 13 says, And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such that are in the sea and all that are in them. He says, Heard I say. He says, heard I, not hear I say. He says, heard I say, saying, Blessing, honor, and glory, and power be unto him that sit upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. When, when that was said, every person heard what the angel said. Yet God that sits upon the throne, and Jesus, power, glory, honor, and blessings forever and ever. Well, that's the end of our class for today, and uh, we will continue on in verse 11 in our next class, and I uh, appreciate uh, your uh, uh, attendance, and hope that uh, brought something out that uh, you understand will help you out, and until the next time, and we have close our class. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and grace. And pray, dear Lord, that this word will touch the hearts of many, that those who are here, and it will help them along their way in finding you and strengthening them in you to live a better and more comfortable life, knowing who you are and that you are with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
Okay, good morning class. And we want to start our class out this, this morning. Uh, we want to start at, uh, in a, chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 11, and uh, go on through 23, and uh, see what else Paul, Apostle Paul has to tell us here, or told us in the letter that he sent to the people there in Ephesians. And it seems like as we read this letter, that not only did Apostle Paul write this to them, but he's wrote it to us as well. Because this is stuff that we need to know, stuff that encourages us, and lifts us up. And the things you know to know how well blessed we are, what the Lord did, and how well blessed that God loves us the way he does. You know, so let's start our class out this morning with a word of prayer and uh, pray for all those that are sick and afflicted, those that have lost a loved one, and uh, pray the Lord will comfort them, healing as it's needed, and uh, we ask them to bless our country and uh, our leadership that needs help so much that he will uh, give them the words that they need to strengthen them to do the right thing. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, we want to thank you for this opportunity to read your word again, to study, and to learn what Apostle Paul told the Ephesians back then that is so much enriched for us today and for our guidance. Lord, we pray for the sick and afflicted, the hungry, the homeless, and praying for those that have lost a loved one, our country, our leadership that's in need, and, you know, we just give you the praise and the glory for us. Lord, we ask that you be in our service and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, as we start out today in verse 11, chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 11, it says here, it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, as the grace of God is given to different people, they are called into the ministry, or you know, for different offices, different reasons, and uh, you know, it depends on what, I guess, denomination that, that you are in, or where you're at, uh, what type of church you're going to, whether you do have, uh, have these, you know, prophets or evangelists, some pastors and teachers and different ones, you know. Of course, the evangelist that travels from around and in the foreign countries and does their work, and apostles too, around, and uh, that, that is so close to the Lord. You know, it's just unbelievable. But to be as close as Apostle Paul was, you know, uh, it's just almost, you know, you look back in the times when the God spoke to the prophets, you know, that uh, like, uh, you know, like he talked to Noah about building the ship, and you know, and, and uh, Moses, how he spoke to Moses so many times, bringing the people out of it, uh, Egypt and all, you know, and being in the desert as long for 40 years, you know, and that's uh, to have God's communication, but you know, today, we have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. God can communicate with us at all times. And you can communicate with Him. You know, we don't have to go to the prophet see what the prophet says God says. We can talk to the Lord at any time. We want to, right? He's there present. Okay, so he says, As the Lord knows the needs of every denomination of churches, He supplies or meets their needs in different ways by supplying them the type of people that, you know, that is called in the ministry to do, you know, and that's, some people are to do certain jobs in, in, the, in there, and some people don't, and, you know, it just, as God looks upon the heart as he chooses people to do different jobs, you know, and, uh, but no matter who you are and what your place is, we should do it with open heartedness and with love and with servitude toward the Lord, you know, with what he's done for us. Verse 12, he says, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, as the congregation here is the body of Christ, makes this church up, we all are different, have special needs, but we all have something in us that's more of a specialty. 
something a little bit different than the other. It's like having a finger, a hand, a thumb, you know, and a wrist, and an arm, and an elbow, and you know, your shoulder, and, and, and all these different things, the tennis, you know. They, they're all there for a reason that makes the human body, just as the body of Christ, that the congregation, that we're all different, we all come to matter together to make this body to perform what the Lord wants it to do. And the main thing is to make it do is for us to live according to, to his commands and that the outside world can see that we have the love of Christ, that God is loving and that God is blessing these people and blessing you as an individual, that you, we could draw the lost and undone people that's out here in the world, draw them in to salvation, that we, they would listen to the God's word and to be saved. Number 13 says, Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. It says, Until we all come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. You know, it is as we... Once we get saved, as we start reading the Bible and growing in the grace of knowledge, once we got get to finding out more and more about the Lord and more how much God loved us to save the souls of men, that he would send his son down here to go through what he went through and that he would give his Holy Spirit by the request of Jesus that once people were saved, that the Holy Spirit could enter in to teach and guide us, you know, to keep us close to him all the time, that he could, you know, could correct us when we need to be correct, you know, and that's the thing, you know, by keeping us closer and closer to him, that, you know, that as Jesus said, that he has not lost one that his father had given. He's never lost one. You know, and that's, that's amazing, you know, to know that he has never, never lost the one. And <clears throat> says, to reach that point of understanding that we need to be faithful and have trust in the Lord to please God, our high priest was a perfect man. You know, Jesus is our high priest, and he, when he was here on earth, he was a perfect man. But he was the son of God. He's no sin in him. And that he is our advocate between God the Father and us, the Creator. And to make intercessions for us, he knows how to do that because he suffered in all forms, just as we suffer, you know. So he knows how it is, and you know, and he knows how to take care of us. 14 says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slightness of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive us. You know, the devil has so many people out there working for him. He works through so many people. As Jimmy tells us here this morning, Sometimes it's not the, the devil's direct approach to get you. It is maybe the indirect approach coming to your friends or loved ones, you know, <clears throat> that would lead you astray or ask you to do something that you know that you shouldn't do that you would do, you know. And that's the thing, you know, that, uh, that we be established in the Word, reading God's Word, and know deceivers when we hear them or see them. I'm asking you to remember, just remember. Well, Job chapter 1. Let's just turn to Job chapter 1. And I want to read this if you, just in case you forgot. And I hope if you study, it gives you an idea. If you go to Job chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Okay, and it says here, 
Now there was a day when the Son of God came, sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered to the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Satan is walking around like a roaring lion to find who he may devour. And he said right here, Job says that he's walking around all the time just to see who he can who he can pull astray or lead astray or lead them into sin. We've got to remember that. The adversary. Once you learn, <clears throat> you read God's word and you start finding this out, how well it how the, the devil deceives people and all, then we should strengthen ourselves and be apt more when we find ourselves being tricked or pulled in to call upon the name of the Lord to help break him free from us and that we be strengthened to know that the Lord is just so close to us. You know? And in 15, we read, it says, But speaking the truth in love, may love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Speaking in love, as God's word grows in us, we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. And you know, in remembering St. John 14 and 23, uh, <clears throat> St. John 14 and 23 tells us this, that Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man loves me, love me, he will keep my works, my word, he will keep my word, words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. God will the Lord will and God will dwell with you if we keep his commandments, we keep his word inside of us and reject Satan's own thoughts on us, you know. Push him away. Jesus came on this earth to destroy the works of the devil. And I thank Lord, I praise God for that. And I've often thought, <clears throat> you just remember how many years it was from the time, you know, that you were born to the day that you got saved. And think about all those sins sin debts that was wrote and under your name that you had to give an account for. And once you got saved, Jesus wiped that all clean. He covered it, put it under the blood. How much work of the devil did he destroy in just a matter of minutes, seconds? You know, that's, that's what, what you need to remember, how the power of God, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, that's what we need to remember, always. Okay, in 16, from whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted at, by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase to the body and to the edifying of itself in love. You know what? And he's He's talking about us as a congregation, edifying each other, coming together in love, working as a unit to feed the hungry, to uh, spread the gospel, you know, and to, you know, take care of widows and orphans, you know, and going to the jails and preaching the gospel down there, and, you know, to doing all this, you know, and when we have our dinners, you know, here at the church, you know, say so many people comes in, extra people comes in, you know, our, our loved ones, our, you know, and family, other family members. But all those that makes food, you know, and brings in, you, you're bringing something in. This, you know, it's done in love. And it brings people in <clears throat> that, hear, that will hear the word of God. And that this word that's going in will settle we're praying that it settles in and takes hold. And if there's one lost, 
somewhere down this road they're going to be saved by this word. That word will grow. You know, they remember, hey, I heard that in the church. I should have known, you know. But sooner or later, it takes a hold. Okay, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. <clears throat> Paul, here, he says right here, he says, this I say, therefore, testifying in the Lord. Now, is Apostle Paul saying, hey, I admit that he once was outside of God's will? Of course he was. He thought he was doing right by working for the church, but he found out when Jesus stopped him there that he was not. He was working against God's will. He was harming God's people until Jesus enlightened him. You know, and that's the thing about the word of the Lord, but to have the Lord speaking to you directly as Paul did there, happened to Paul, I guess that to me was really, that would really check my nerves, I believe. I believe I'd, it'd take me a while to kind of settle down calm because to have the Lord Jesus to speak to me directly, that would be, uh, I don't know how I handle that without losing, you know, get very nervous. And of course, if Apostle Paul, the light blinding him as he did, the light, the you know, the light of the Lord, you know, and it's pure light that came upon him. It was the light of the Lord, it's a pure light, you know. And that's something we need to remember that's on the back of our mind. Just because we've not seen it doesn't mean that it's not there. It's there because they've been witness and been you know, as it was the Apostle Paul, and as he wrote, you know. So, did, uh, so he, he was once outside the will of the Lord and through ignorance. That well, you know, he was actually happened through ignorance <clears throat> until Jesus met him and changed his life's work. And he started working for God instead of against God, didn't he? Sure did. By the grace of God, by the grace that God gave him, you know. And that's the thing that happens to us. We'll start working until it's the grace of God. He gives us that grace that we're saved and brings us into ministry and gives us a job to do, gives us an opportunity. You know, God has the agenda, and he's the one that does the call. You and I need to listen and serve as we are called. That's the thing. Okay, it says number 18 it says, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. See, they were unsaved. That's why he's saying, Apostle Paul is saying, they were unsaved, you know. <clears throat> when you're not, as a way of walking the way of the world, being unsaved, uncircumcised in the heart not by the will of God, because God's will is that you be saved and be your heart be circumcised. <clears throat> and that's something we, you know, once we get saved and become Christians, we don't need to try to cross over back, not hanging on to what's in the past, because we can't change what's in the past. Our future is in front of us. And if we've been saved, our future is Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to remember always. He is our future, our destiny. And one day, our destiny will appear in front of us and call us home from where we're at. If we're in the grave or if we're here on earth, we will, he will call us to meet him up there. Okay, 19 says, Who being past feeling, having given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness and to grieve. You know, that's the people back then, you know, people, as he was saying there, <coughs> the people that were unsaved <coughs> before, you know, that they, uh, they, you know, the ways of the world. And he talked about the lasciviousness is that which tends to incite lewd emotions. In other words, your thoughts. 
That's the reason you got to be careful about what you think. You know, uh, it is so easy to look at something and something that you're not supposed to be looking at or thinking about things that you shouldn't be thinking about. Accusing people of doing things that you're not sure that they've done and things of that nature, you know what I'm saying here? That uh, we shouldn't be thinking about that because the Lord knows what we're thinking. And you know, and before you got saved, you never thought about things like this, did you? You never thought about how much the Lord knows of our innermost thoughts and our innermost emotions. But he sure does. Verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. He, he said right there, if you have gone back to this, or if you've not, you know, if, if this is what you're doing, then you've not really learned Christ. You know, you are walking in this manner. You have not learned or accepted Jesus Christ in your heart. You've got to accept it. It's got to be a complete transformation. The old man, you've got to lay him down and pick up the new man. The new man that the Holy Spirit indwells with, guides and teaches, and that, you know, and that you are reaching out for your future, which is the Lord, you know. <clears throat> and in 21, and 20, 21, says this, that if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. In other words, if you've sat in the church and you've heard the word and you've been taught, you've sat in Sunday school class and the word's been taught to you and you know you know, that this pertains to you and that the truth is in Jesus Christ. The Lord is the truth. And as he said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, what, you know, if you have heard the gospel of the Lord, you have heard Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, and if you remember, uh, in St. John 14 and 6, it tells us this, you know, and 23, 22 and 23 says that ye put off concerning the formal conversations of the old man. That's what I'm saying. The way you used to talk and the old man, what he's saying here, the way you used to talk, the things you used to do, that you put them off, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. You know, that's just it. The lust of the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life and all this stuff, you know, and saying, boy, look, look at me, this is what I've done. This is what, you know, I can do this or I can do that. The only way that you was able to do that is if God allowed it. If God had not allowed it, it would not have happened. That's something that we remember. We learn as we grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Putting away the formal things that you used to do and say, being saved from the bonds of sin and the fear of death. Let the Holy Ghost of God teach you and help transform you into the likeness of, his, of the God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, what I want you to remember is St. John chapter 14 and 26. St. John 24. No. St. John 14 and 26. St. John 14 and 26. And it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now what was it that Jesus said unto you? His words is right here in, uh, in the book, in the Bible. And if you wrote most books, you wrote in red letters and in the Bible, uh, what the Lord said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you read them, it's just like the Lord is just, as he was teaching them there at the time, 
and telling his disciples. He was telling you at the same time. So, and if you want to remember, you know, the Holy Spirit will guide you and teach you. And, you know, and so that's the end of the class today. And thank you. And I hope that words have been brought out that, that open your heart to the word God's word and that it will help you to look in God's word, to find the answers that you need and to help you overcome anything, obstacles or whatever that is beset upon you and uh, help you to defend Satan away whenever he brings trouble to your doorstep. So in the class of prayer, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that you've given us. We thank you for the reading of this word and the studying of what Apostle Paul told him back then. It's just like he's telling us today. You know, our faith and trust is to be in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.